Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go over the Dow 30. Uh, uh, these are gonna be yearly charts, okay. Here's SSYS. Uh, I basically, I used this one when uh, I posted it a couple weeks ago <clears throat> that it found, it landed on pivot down here, kind of lost its momentum. I'm not saying it's gonna go back up to here. But what I'm saying is that if we're following the same path that we are, during the late 90s, we, were, we get out of the conglomerate um, large uh, 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 multinational type corporations and we go chasing after the little stocks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Basically, we start running the crap as they call it. So, um, so, uh, so here is a yearly bar. These are upper targets that I was, I'm, I'm aiming for uh, for right now. Um, uh, it's holding from uh, uh, where you may have gotten in, um, uh, I think a little under, I think it's under 18. Okay, around 18. All right, so as I run through these, here's Goldman Sachs. Okay, it's at R1. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to stop. I'm just pointing out that uh, here, and these are basically for the whole decade, okay? Basically, here's R1, and it's it moved from the pivot all the way up to R1, okay? So th the thing here is that, uh, uh, as you can see uh, previously, um, uh, it's not marked on here, but, it, you know, the, the previous high on here, uh, before we rolled over, okay? It sent out Coca-Cola this morning that Coca-Cola is making basically a topping reversal bar on a yearly basis. And Coca-Cola did that back in 1998. So it's, we're kind of doing the same thing. Humans do the same thing. Markets basically do the same thing. We rotate from, from uh, if, you know, the, the dollar goes lower, commodities go higher. Dollar goes higher, commodities come down. Uh, the real estate cycle, the car replacement. Um, there's a lot of things like that, that that repeat besides salmon spawning and lemmings and, and uh, droughts and things of that nature. So here's a deal where on a yearly basis, uh, Goldman Sachs is at R1. And it's, it's just a referencing. It's not, I'm not, you know, it works down here on Pivot. Um, you know, uh, it's at R1. So it's just, I'm just pointing that, that kind of thing out. Um, here you have uh, 3M, okay. The other thing too is it's closing at the high of the year, same type of deal here. Closed at the high, closed at the high. The following year, basically traded uh, inside of it, uh, closing at the high again. Remember that these, as the dollar continues to go higher, 95% of the world is over there. So repatriating of the dollars it causes issues. Um, uh, it's, it's one of those, and these, these aren't logged on here, so it's a little easier to see. Um, but then the other, the other flip side of this here is the angle of ascent, okay? On these, it's kind of great. I, you know, I posted a chart going back to the 30s to today uh, you know, for the Elliott waivers, you know, most um, empires only last between two and 400 years, and we're over 200 years for right now, you know, in Portuguese, the Spanish, say like the Romans, the British, you know, America, you know, that kind of thing. We're down to 84% of the economy service. We were uh, a good chunk of GDP for the world, and we're down to 19%. Um, the, the split in wages versus CEO pay. There's a lot of splits out there that uh, I point out, you know, 10,000 people a day go on Social Security, but we only create 6,000 jobs. Wait for the recession. The people are still going to go on Social Security, um, even though something just came out that said that we're, we're not living as long again. But we had a, a blip back in the 90s on that, too. Um, all of it. Uh, maybe Earth is peaking out overall in general. Okay, so we have 3M here. It's also closing at the high. So it's one of those deals that hit close at the high and then traded on the inside of the year. You also have declining volume here. Okay. 
uh, IBM. Um, it came back through and now it's in an area where, where it ran in here. Here's a close, open close, open again. So it's now in an area uh, where it previously paused. You know, there's, these would be the upper wicks. Okay. So we had, a, so it's IBM is in an area where it stalled before basically. Um, Boeing, Boeing's had a, a pretty good run. I had mentioned that a, a month ago somewhere that, um, that that'd probably be a place to hide out when you're going through the Dow 30. <clears throat> um, you know, it's also close in at the, it doesn't mean it's, you know, we're going to get an inside year. Um, this, this was a nice pattern here. This is a, uh, like a dragonfly or a uh, gravestone type doji. Okay. I saw that in Coke, but I'm, I'm basically looking at, you know, the, they had the run up, but we also have the issue with the dollar. You know, the, here's a time period here through uh, the eighties where the dollar was stronger and, and uh, Boeing had issues. And in the nineties here, the dollar picked up again, but it also caught wind of uh, uh, the, 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 the blow off the dot com period. But you can see here also, uh, we had a period where um, we balanced the budget and we also had a stronger dollar and it was affected by it. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just, I'm pointing these things out here. Uh, Home Depot, same thing. A lot of these, you know, to get this to come back up, it takes a lot of money, like the money flow I talk about. So here, this is like a lot of work to make a marginal new high, okay? Um, coming back here, 1999 and 2000, you closed at the high and then basically you had the reversal on here. The declining volume also. McDonald's, uh, this one does look like it's working on a topping bar here. McDonald's, I think 74% of their income comes from overseas, a stronger dollar, uh, you know, it, th that kind of thing. Um, I go to McDonald's um, in the morning. One, uh, they're open at four, cup of coffee. I look around, what are people, get? the kids are getting meals, the old men and stuff, they're just, they're getting a coffee, they're spending a buck, you know, what are the ticket prices, that kind of thing, you know. As a kid with the styrofoam containers, that McDonald's was good, but then after a while, you eat the McDonald's and wash it down with the cold Coke, you know, it feel so swell, right? But, you know, here is this type of, you know, pattern here where you have the upper wick, it's kind of losing momentum, you know, this is, is this a topping bar? Well, you probably won't know until the following year, of course, right? On um, unbalanced volume, basically the same thing. You did get um, uh, a bounce in volume here, but it's, it's weaker. We still have some time to go before the end of the year on here. Uh, United Health Group, that one, it's closing at the higher end of the range. It's one of these things that, um, you know, you have the higher end of the range and get the reversal, same thing, uh, open up here and then reverses. I'm not saying, you know, that it's not going to happen, but the deal is, is that we've, we've moved this far, okay, in here. Yes, Kevin said that the stock market, just, just you know, using history pass, it should double. You know, I'm looking for, you know, it was 47.50 on the S&P. Um, but it's one of those things that uh, if it is, a, I'm going along with this, the real estate cycle too. But like I pointed out, we have the baby boomers. So we're going to have a lot of existing homes versus new homes. And we have a, a period now where we're raising interest rates instead of lowering interest rates like we did from uh, 80 until 2000. Uh, well, I guess it was um, post Brexit it was basically the bottom. But we did get some, we got some movement prior to that. You know, we're closing at the high, okay? It's kind of like, you know, after the dot-com blew up, you know, what was cheap out there? Well, oil was, you know, eight, 12 bucks a barrel. Silver was, you know, three fifty, five bucks. Uh, you know, soybeans were, you know, $5. Corn was $2. Wheat was $3. You know, on and on and on and on. That was the thing. So it's, it's one of these that, you know, it's spent the whole year. It's had this great move and, you know, you set in a high that could be permanent. 
um, travelers, insurance, these uh, should do swell with higher interest rates. Um, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, the, the volume is waning on here. Okay. So you're getting, you're not as getting as much conviction. You know, you can see how the volume, you know, we, we had the baby boomers, the money making years contributing to their IRA. Unfortunately, they, blew up with the real estate market. And so this is basically the new money coming in here and it's less than that. So, you know, this is, this is our millennials and that, you know, the most educated of the, the generations who are basically living in a smaller home, you know, half the size of what the, the boomers basically bought and the old one car garage type of thing. So, you know, it's two sides of a coin on the plus side. The, the millennials can come in here, but, you know, we, we have to give it to them, you know. Um, like everything else, you know, they, had, they ran into financial issues here with the pullback. They, they also came down with the dot-com, but they, they have it now where the interest rates are moving higher. So it helps out insurance companies because they buy paper. So this is, they're benefiting from the higher interest rates. How much of that is already priced in? Well, you figure the whole cycle is going to be priced in on here. Where do we stop with interest rates? We basically aim for normality par, which is about 6%, which makes home, home mortgages about seven and three quarters, right? <laughs> so we do, it. this is interest rates, just like currencies and that they trend for a long period of time. We basically bottomed after the Great Depression topped out uh, in 1980, then bought, you know, that's 30 years or so. And then 30 years later, 2012, we began to start bottoming around. And then on the long end on the bonds and stuff, uh, post Brexit was, was it. And then we've had, we've had a pretty good run. So, uh, Johnson and Johnson, same thing. Um, international sales, things of that nature. I talked about, um, up in here on the short side of things. Basically, we're getting a bounce because uh, the people are moving into to staples again. They staples like you know band aids and Coca Cola and things that we purchase all the time. They usually come off when they're speculating somewhere else. And now we saw a pickup. I assumed part of it was we're running into new highs. What's cheap out there? Because that's that's how I look at it. It's you know if if, if equities blow up, where do we go? What we're going to do is we're going to, the next thing is we're going to push people into real estate. Uh, you know, the commodity cycle, the secular cycle is over with. I view commodity, the bounces here is wave fours. And then when we come into the next recession here in the next couple of years, uh, that would be the bottom in commodities. And then you want to start accumulating again. Uh, but, you know, there's this upper wickiness here. You know, there's, it's ran up there, now it's come off. Um, it doesn't mean that the, the trend's going to change, but um, uh, I just want you to be aware of where we're at. So, you know, same thing here with Apple. You know, here were, were areas were uh, open and closed. It came back, found a support area. Now we're about halfway back. Um, if you remember Cisco in 2000, it was the largest market cap stock. Exxon does that every once in a while. But when you become the largest market cap stock, you can only go down number two, number three, number four, number, that kind of thing. Apple, consumer products, you know, I've loved Apple way back when, you know, I had the 2C, I even went as far as getting the C50, which was the generic when they tried to go commodity before jobs came back, okay? So to me, I think Apple has jumped the shark last year multiple you had three times of selling it like 134 with earnings i think that apple's done with in my eyes okay um uh, next page walt disney okay you have all through the 90s when disney was roaring hot okay uh, they had all the movies one after another after another remember these aren't logged charts okay we had the huge swing up in disney um, you know, here you have open, close, open, close again. So has Disney jumped the shark? Well, you're going to hear talk about Star Wars again, but it's not a Star Wars movie. So, you know, they're trying to, you know, create buzz. 
but if you saw the Star Wars that came out in December of last year, Disney peaked in August. Okay, so has Disney jumped the shark forever? You know, you know, we may be on the verge of something major here. Okay, because of like I said, the baby boomers and everything, um, you know, I went to one website, I think it was Six Flags or whatever, or Sandusky, and they had a six month payment plan to go to an amusement park, okay? So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you have to make payments to go spend an afternoon with your family. Yes, we all basically do it once. And then, you know, as grandparents, we doubt, doubt on our children, the grandchildren, the, the, the thing you get, to, there's, there's, there's more bodies on the planet, more lines, you know, you used to go in the single line, you know, that kind of thing, you know, whatever your, your friends are in the car behind you. You know, it's there, we have wrists, you know, uh, you know, make appointments to go on a ride. You know, it's, it's almost like cattle, you know, in, in the shoots, you know, but you, you know, and then the other one too is how big do they make the parks? Do you have the China thing where you spend $6 billion and, you know, they have to go, you know, and, and it's one of these that, you know, this may be it for Disney here. Okay. Uh, United Technologies, same type of deal, came down, worked its way back up, and it's back at an area where it's stalled before. Uh, a lot of these corporations, the best thing that could probably happen for the stock market is a lot of these corporations, starting with Bank of America, breaking the thing up. Bank of America, I believe it's not supposed to hold more than 10% of deposits. I not, I haven't looked for a while, but I, I remember reading a statistic where Bank of America, because they bought Countrywide and Merrill Lynch does business with half the country. Okay, we can't have, we're down to three money center banks. These guys going golfing and going, this is what we're going to do. We have to, we need to get some competition here. So what we need to do is we need to break up a lot of these corporations. It, it worked swell for um, the Rockefeller when we broke up his trust. It's, look at what happened with the baby bells, that kind of thing. So on their own, they're just, they're massive. They're, you know, all it takes is one thing, like say the dollar. You, you're, you can't control the markets, you know, the Donald's going to go in there and he has a real estate empire. How is he going to like rates when they start approaching double digits kind of thing as we go forward? I'm not saying it's going to happen in four years, but you can have things where it goes crazy in a hurry, just like in the 77, 79, 80 period. You know, there's, it's, I'm not, I'm not, but when in my line of work, when you go from one extreme, like ZERP, you usually go to the other extreme. I'm using it that we went from high double digit rates that we actually had passed legislature to take back usury laws so banks could charge more. And then we went to zero. Okay. So I'm hoping that we, we fall somewhere in between kind of work our way back to normal. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, we've like Japan had interest rates at zero for what two decades. Okay, Japan. I think Japan itself it owns like sixty percent of the stock out there. I mean, we're how how about this one? Okay, nobody talks about it because, of course, nobody wants to rattle the cages. But the number one buyer of U.S. debt is Social Security. Okay, so if you have we're off of it now, but if you have zero interest rates or negative interest rates, that would mean that if you put in a thousand dollars into your social security, they're only going to give you 980 and it's paper that's negative. So after 300 years or whatever, you're, you're back to your thousand bucks. So nobody wants, you know, and it's not just America, you know, it's, it's other countries too. We don't say anything. Um, laws were changed in 1975 to not favor the labor or the worker anymore. It was changed to the corporation. And to me as a market guy, laissez-faire, libertarian, 
the market will take care of itself. You don't have to meddle with it. You know, the Fed did the Fed did exactly what it was supposed to do this time around as a buffer. Uh, but home prices would peak out even if you didn't raise interest rates. We just kind of helped the cycle along here. You know, a couple of years of pain so you can have, you know, a decade of growth kind of deal. But United Technologies, same type, it's back in an area where it paused before. You know, it closed here, opened here, and reversed. So it's, I'm not saying it's, you know, it's, it's just a relative thing here. Um, Chevron, with the oil and everything, oil's come back. Like I said in the, some Monday's video that I think oil's going to hold. These guys can hedge way, way out there in the distance. Uh, let me take a look at this here. Uh, bar chart. Uh, let's see. Kevin logs in. Kevin does the Facebook. Okay. Kevin does the futures. Kevy looks for oil and oil core all futures. All right, there 18, 19, 20, 25, 20, 25. So we're back to the next real estate peak on here. You don't you open interest in volume, it's not there. Okay, but what I'm what I'm pointing out, like here. You can hedge, you know, people hedged for December of 21. Basically, that should be the bottom in oil uh, during the recession. So here's some open interest in 2022, 2023. So it's not just, you know, hedging for the next few years. Um, what do we have? December of 17. Okay. So they're, they're already, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Yesterday's oil, they were able to hedge further out, okay? And, and now they can pump all they want. Um, and it's red. <laughs> so, so, you know, here we're, you know, we're at 52, it was low 35, so we're, you know, like, it, you know, it's one of those, what do they call it, prisoner's dilemma um, type of deal. So, you know, uh, Chevron, they, you know, if you pump it out, pull it out of the ground yourself and, and refine it, you get good margins. But here it's basically, they just make pennies on a lot. Uh, I saw a statistic that the United States is supposed to increase population by 50%, which I'm going to guess we're not all going to end up in Gary, Indiana or Detroit, but as a market person, that's where you buy the land, right? Uh, the industry is not there because like I said, we're service, but after, you know, it's kind of like Constantinople or whatever, you know, you're at a hub of something and then it goes somewhere else. You know, we all can't pile into the Southwest in California because we're limited on water. And if you ever saw the, if you've seen the rings in Las Vegas down there, it's a sad state of affairs of how much water is missing, but I won't go into that. Uh, one, one little thing is that we pump, we have pipelines, we could pump water from flood areas. It'd be mucky, of course, and ruin the pipes. But we move natural gas and different distillates, distillates through the pipelines. Why not pump? Yeah, that's right, Calf. Solve California's problem by handing out water. <laughs> oh boy, let's move to California. They don't know. But you understand what I'm saying. You know, we can resolve, but we're only going to make things. California is, you know, there's lush areas, but it's where everybody's basically at is a, is a desert. So technically, we shouldn't be the kind of like where I'm at. I shouldn't be here. You know, but, but I'm here. I'm happy to. All right. So Chevron, you know, big swing from oil coming down here, if, if oil gets, you know, if I look at it, you know, it's the same type of deal. You know, through the 80s, I talked about dead money. Um, 90s kind of worked out for Chevron here. Um, uh, but, it, you know, if, if oil kind of just sits at the $45 range for a decade, you know, how does this work? Oh, yes, getting back. So we had 50% of the population in the United States were actually going to use less fuel, okay? Um, so that was an interesting deal. I watched Gas Hole. I guess somebody in the 60s invented a carburetor where it's a heated mist. 
and they had a 2,000 pound car, whatever, Studebaker or something, and drove, it was like 150 or 400 miles on a gallon of gas. And of course the person ends up dead on the side of the road outside Vegas, you know? It's kind of like diesel. He was on the ship and now he's not on the ship, you know? Here and or there, but makes for good reading. Procter & Gamble, same type of deal. You know, you can only change your containers and, you know, the, I don't know if they make Pringles anymore, but, but the same type of deal. Consumer goods, it had its, its ups and downs, ups and downs, it works. You know, their growth is Africa, Asia, things of that nature. We buy X amount of, but it's, I just, you know, I'm pointing out that, you know, this, this one year was, you know, this is where it closed. It opened and traded lower. It opened at, the, you know, at the close, it traded higher, but here's where we're back to where it was previous. So, um, you know, I'm just pointing out in relationship to where we are. Exxon Mobil, well, maybe Exxon Mobil will swing higher and it will become the number one cap company again. I believe it's, we're fighting with Google kind of thing. Uh, Visa, you, you got me on this one. All I know is when, when these things come IPO, this actually looks like a topping pattern right here. So what do we have for Visa back into the 30s? So cut in half, which would actually go along with the stock market, losing a third to a half. It's, it's not that I'm a perma bear, you know, at, SPX 683 when I was looking at options and they were priced that we would never see 700 uh, for these uh, index options and I said we were just there yesterday I said that was that and, and then um, you know so you know I'm trying to give you my mindset so from 683 we march it up um, you know to, to 2013 and then um, uh, it was the S&P was at 1600 and I said 2200 by 2016. In the beginning of the year when we're at 1800, I said 2400, we got post Brexit, people were getting frothy. And I, I turned, I, I go along, I, it's price is one thing, you know, I, I have a tough time in bull markets with stocks because everything's overpriced. You know, I always say that if, if I was reincarnated, I'd come back as an Amazon, analyst and I'd be sitting there, you know, with the PE of minus 6,000. <laughs> why is it going up? You know, and that's why you have like EBITDA and all these other fun ones on there. Uh, you know, how their growth and you know, how their ROI and ROR and ROE and blah, blah, blah. You know, just, to me, it's, this is all I need to know. You know, it's pointing one way, but Visa does have that topping pattern thing going on here. Um, uh, you know, so what am I looking at here? 65. So it'd be one of these things that, you know, what we're December 60, December 17 puts at 65. So, you know, that's what I'd look at. Um, or July's, June, July, that kind of thing. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but this is, this is how Kevin, oh, it's a topping pattern. Well, I'd, I'd shoot for 65 or then the next target would be like, what, 52, 55, Fibonacci 55. You know, and that's, that's kind of how I'd lean at it. Uh, Walmart, Stars, Amazon, it's awfully different. They all end up the same way. They did the, Sears did the, Sears it was the Amazon of its day. It had a catalog. It sent everybody a catalog. Montgomery Wards comes to mind. Carson, Peary, Scott. Uh, on and on and on. Retailing after restaurants. Retailing is the it's kind of the quote unquote worst thing to get into. Walmart did its deal. It kept prices low. People are convinced that prices are low, but if you go shopping at Walmart, the people that used to run Target, I think run Walmart now, and prices aren't there. Um, men do a lot of that. Women aren't so price conscious. The man comes home and he's drunk and gray and he knows he's going to lose his job and she runs out and buys a area rug. <laughs> God bless women. We're in the thrills of a deep recession and it's time to go buy curtains. But that's, that's, that's here nor there. That goes back to the hunter gatherer and the, you know, but uh, I, you know, gotta love women, man. I just, it's, it, it is, it's kind of like the stock market when you're going to lose your house and your marriage and your job, that's the time to buy. 
you know, when you're giddy and you're going to add on to your own, you know, and because you're comfortable and, and, and masks and then that's, uh, that's when it falls apart. You know, like right now, I pointed out of those bars, uh, the, the SPX, a, a lot of hope are in those fat bar, a lot of bodies are in there. Me as a floor trader, you know, I know they're sitting there. They'd be ripe to be spanked, and that's what I'd want to do. It's not that I'm passive aggressive. It's just the opportunity is that presents itself. You know, it's like I point out before, Amazon doubles its prices. Nobody goes shops. Amazon cuts their prices in half. People buy as much. Stock market doubles. They can't wait to mortgage their home. Stock market crashes. They panic. It's it's it, like I said. I try to I try to keep it mechanically. Listen to your gut. Try not to you know. The the, the macro cycle is your best one. You know I have data going back to 1790 with the real estate in the United States and it's an 18 year cycle. 20 uh, 1987. What's what's 18 years there? 2005, well, holy buckets, December 2005, real estate peaked. Nine-year trough, which would be about 14. Hey, look, things are beginning to pick up again, right? So we're on the upswing. Um, but it, like I said, everybody has a payment. So whatever you can get out of that house with the payment, that's how it works. Our, everything is relative. I live in Arizona here. People, they, oh, I'm going to move to California. I can make more money. Yeah, well, less, guess what? I fill up my car once a month. You know, I only drive between 1,500 and 3,500 miles a year. Kev, you got to get out more. <laughs> well, you know, it's, 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 you know, I do. I get, I drive to Vegas and get on a plane, right? All right, so if you've ever flown into Phoenix in the summertime, what's that? Orange stuff, that's mm, fresh air, I'll pass. Walmart, okay, get in it, hand it to it by Amazon. Same thing, corporations are designed to fail. We tell them that they have to expand, have to expand, have to expand. Walmart did the exact same thing as Sears. Go from the catalog, go to the store, then all of a sudden they get into the credit card and the brokerage firm, to what's it, Dean Witter? You know, on and on, and then now Sears had to hold on for dear life by merging with Kmart and using the real estate as capital. You know, and you know, the the whole Sears may have been one thing with Craftsman and and Kenmore, but it's you know, everything is basically generic these days. Uh, you know. Uh, and then design to fail, car batteries. You get you, uh, Johnson Control has that thing figured out something fierce. You know, I used to be able to buy longer batteries. I get two years, I get 2.4 months out. It doesn't make any difference. They have it all chemicals and everything. They have it figured out. And the worst part is, is it's that it, it's not like you know it's coming. <laughs> it's just one day you crank it over and you're like, oh, it's dead. There's just, there's no buffer anymore with the, you know. I'm out here in the desert, so things are a little bit different, but it's, uh, we, we definitely need some disruptors in there, and we have that with Tesla. Um, but Walmart, you know, here's the close, here's the open, here's the this, this, we do this thing, we're reversing back into an area here. Um, we did get a, they, they did, they were interested in a little bit of buying on here. I don't know, do we assume that this is gonna continue higher going into the recession? You know, I you just draw your trend line underneath it. I'll give it, but I'm just like I said, I'm just pointing out an area. This was an area that was an issue before. You know, it opened and traded lower. Um, here was an issue. This was it for the high. So you know, to me, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll slant that maybe it's it, but you know, it's kind of like where do you put the money? You know, where's the growth? Uh, Caterpillar, same thing. You know, here all of a sudden, boom, zippity. You know, here R two. Wick, 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 stalled right at it. I'd have to lean that, you know, Caterpillar is not going to go back into the 80s. That's that's just how I have to kind of lean at it. Um, yeah, we're going to get, you know, the you know the Republicans are going to spend like they did under, under Reagan, which is fine, you know, but 95% of the planet's over there. So this has, you know, they have to work in their overseas stuff. You can see the years here was an issue, and then it reversed, and then they, they bit it back up, but we're at R1 or R2 on, um, on a uh, yearly. DuPont, 
you know, you can see it was here. We're closing at the high. Here's previous decade um, R2. So here it's at a previous one. So I kind of, you know, they have to ship it overseas. The dollar is stronger. You can follow my trend down here. Um, banks, they, we, they have it made because we're the, the tightening cycle. We raise rates and pour money into the system. Um, but how much of that is already in it kind of thing. And this is what I worry about uh, for your Elliott waivers. This could be like an ABC, which is typically a wave four. This is the wave five. So it's like, is this the end of the United States? Here's Nike. I don't know why you're in the Dow, but then again, there was Polaroid at one time. Uh, it's, that was known as an instamatic camera. You take a picture and flop it around in the air to dry, and there's your picture. You didn't have to go to a, what was it, Koda, or a photo mat, photo mart. The little yellow built, we had little yellow buildings in, in shopping centers where you'd drop off your film and pick it up a week later. Oh boy! What is that? Wow, the decades fly by, but here's Nike here. Where was I? I was at Home Depot. Home Depot. And I was padding for carpeting, whatever. And it's, oh, it's made by ground up Nike shoes. And I'm thinking, it's who gives a flying banana? So I'm paying extra premiums. You know, it's Nike. Y yeah, it's shreds of Nike. I don't give a flying. You know, how, how, about, how about shreds of cotton banding or something? You know, before it. How about, you know, just, you know, the stuff you don't, you can't use, piles of seed or whatever. You know what I'm saying. You know, it's what, but it was, you know, think about that one. What kind of, well, it's kind of like uh, Ford and charcoal. You know, he had all that excess wood. So, you know, he made Kingsford charcoal, you know, uh, for his cars. And so Nike... What do we do with all our waste? We find a use for it. But this is, you know, this is, we're getting a bounce up in here, but you can see that, you know, the 62 area was an issue. I haven't had a Nike since the red swoosh of the Farrah Fawcett days, so it's been a while. I'm um, hard on shoes, as they say. I like flip-flops. What are those, rocket dogs? And size 12? <laughs> Kachia, yeah, well, you got a package, Kev. Oh, that's not, you know, you get t-shirts and coffee mugs from all over the world when you do this kind of stuff. It's like, you know, which is fine, you know, bottles of wine and chocolates and whatever gets you customs, you know. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's had a run and a reversal. If it comes back up to maybe the 60 area, I'd kind of pitch it. I just, I'm still trying to figure out why Nike's in the, in the Dow. Go, go read your prospectus in your, uh, in your annual report, Kevin. Learn something. American Express. I, I thought this thing was just going to die. It did, it did find support on the old moving averages. Or, uh, these are channels of 12, 24, and 20, and 48. So it found support on the 12-year. Ah, okay. So it did find support. We're coming back to the hammer thing. If it got to 82... Uh, you know, I, you know, I have Warren Buffett here and he's has chunks of it and stuff. So, you know, it's one of those that maybe if it comes back down to in the sixties, he may do a buyout on the thing that that's it. It's another reason why I, I'm not a big fan of stocks unless it's in the macro cycle, you know, because a lot of, you don't know what's there. You know, when we had specialists, you know, the IBM specialist going through divorce, wife wants half, he opens up IBM three lower for the, for the hell of it you know i mean it's it's, it's you know it's, it's you know that can that's what i like about futures commodities they you know gold won't go to zero silver won't go to zero american express just like you know what was the saying as goes gm goes to the country gm went belly up and ten ten you know so you know uh you know, this is a pretty good hammer here. I mean, look at it. It actually came back in, it, you know, so it was whatever was there, uh, the marketplace did not like it. So, but I would, I'd, you know, if it got up in the eighties, I'd probably dump it, but you know, you have the Warren Buffett thing going on. Um, 
they also, they're brokerage too, I think, American Express, but they still own IDS. You know, they're diversified financials, you know. They're supposed to be making it, but this drop here is somewhat uh, uh, concern. You know, what, everything else went this way. What, what, what happened here? The old, if there's smoke, there's fire. Verizon Communications, I have to believe at some point here, we're gonna have a price war um, uh, on services. Uh, you can see how it, you know, this, this is basically a lot of pause, you know, 2020, of course, and then we get this here. But, um, you know, the, the wickiness of up above here, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these have already moved, you know what I'm saying? And so when you're in the last phases, it's things begin to go insane. Uh, Microsoft, just want to point this out. Here's 2000. It took all this, it was basically, you know, i.e. dead money, you know, uh, until it got back up there. We're in here. I noticed over at the college that Microsoft is our cloud type deal. My only issue with that is is that um, uh, computers are like light bulbs. You flick the switch and it's gone. So we don't have any, it's kind of like books. I mean, it's a nice convenience and stuff, but if anything should happen, uh, what do we do, you know? I'd sit in the classroom when I'm, you know, it's, it's, you know, higher, it, learn new things, right? First, first computer course for me, it was on a telex machine, 110 baud coupler and yellow paper on a roll. What was that, 77, 1977? I t my first IBM was a VAX computer in 86, 85, 86. Yeah, I saw PC Junior and stuff. I had the Apple deal, right? Um, rate alert on the Danish kroner. Where am I at? Danish kroner. One second while I... Okay, so we're... The dollar is doing its thing. Where's gold at? Did gold find a handle yet? Uh, 60. So it is off, right? What did I write? 57, 58? Okay, I better send this back out. So gold's at 60 here on the median line for you guys. Median, let's write down median line. Gold, this is at stock twits. Until I figure out a, a neater system. I'd like to, the college does make an app program, make some sort of RSS thing where it's an app. So whatever I send out, I send out just to you. So I'm not filling up your mailboxes with, you know, some people get, because of the phone companies, they get, People get excited if I send them two megs worth of pictures kind of thing. So I try to do the video. It's a, there's, you know, a time delay, lag, blah, blah, blah. So uh, automated would be nice, but uh, uh, it's kind of like autopilot on an airplane, how you could have the three guys and gals in the cockpit fly past Chicago. <laughs> So I like a little human interaction here, but the, the, the Microsoft, you know, obviously it's, 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 it's doing its magic here and the Dow is price weighted. So Microsoft gets an extra push on here. Um, obviously whatever it's doing, it's working for them. It took a while for them to grasp it. I pay the 995 a month or whatever for, for Microsoft office works 365, whatever. I'm on an Apple. I just, I do it anyway for convenience for the other people who aren't on Apple per se. It's kind of like the access database. You buy the, the office and it's like, where is it? Well, you're going to use this version for the Apple. It's like, okay, I'm back to numbers and whatever. Um, uh, Merck. So it's the whole drug thing. You know, the man taketh away handouts for medical medicare you know if you're gonna if you're gonna cut spending you're gonna cut into these guys right um you know and then that goes back to the r and d and stuff when you know if you if you cut we need national health care it's we have social security you know great depression comes through we get you know we get uh social security the 60s come running through, you know, and all of a sudden people begin to realize that they're no longer part, you know, the, the, the whole corporate model BS. 
they find out that they're just labor and they would move every seven years, right? So then all of a sudden we got quote unquote welfare to kind of go along with unemployment. So it's, it's a bit, it's, it's just a business deal. You know, we, times are good. We hire you. Times are bad. You're fired. Well, we have to sit it out for 18 months or longer as we saw under the, um, the Bush deal. They, we had to extend it a long time. It's, that's the thing that gets me is like FUDA and SUDA, state unemployment tax, federal unemployment tax. Uh, I know it's insurance, right? Yeah. So FUDA and SUDA, unemployment insurance, it's insurance. You're unemployed, you get paid. It's just, it's, it's like car insurance, right? You get in an accident, it pays. I, get, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't understand it. Well, you're unemployed, you fill out this paperwork, blah, blah, blah. Hey, how about this one? You know, they even, it says claim on there, right? But the, the, the whole rigmarole of, no, look, it's it, pay us off, you know, the unemployed, pay us off until things turn again and then put us back to work. We're back to paying food and just think it's, I mean, we're, we're not talking much here, right? You know, what the, the maximum unemployment in Arizona, I think is 240 a week. You know, and that was kind of, uh, uh, I have to, you know, I'm, I go from Minneapolis, which is one of the higher tax states, but we have, a, it goes hand in hand, higher taxes, higher standard of living, you know, Hawaii, California, Massachusetts, you know, it's, you know, it's, I'm not going to get into that, you know, red states are poor states, you know, I'm not going to get into it. I, I'm just, I just, I, you know, you know I'm not, I, like I said, I'm a libertarian, but it's, you have to, you have to, you know, it's, you have to just point out both sides, you know, like, um, uh, some work here. So, you know, if this is one of those where I'm leaning towards this is a jab and then a reversal, you know, if the man starts cutting his social programs, you know, who's going to pay for this? You know, the, the, the baby boomers who are 70 in their seventies that are, that are, you know, working, you know, you know, part-time, part-time pay for their supplement insurance. Something's going to have to give here, folks, you know, this or start selling your stuff in Africa and Asia. You know, that's, the, it's kind of like Ford when he realized that his employees couldn't afford what he was making. He had to, it, it all goes hand in hand. You pay your employees, they're going to buy more of your stuff. It, it, just, it works. It works. It works. We're kind of, we're not, it's kind of getting that there. All right, so here's the Coca-Cola one here. Okay, so Coca-Cola, this is some sort of, we'll say Harami Cross or something on that too, on the, the candlesticks. So we have this thing going on, this 1998 prior to the small caps blow off. This one here, big old wiki on top and this kind of thing. <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, I don't think Coca-Cola is going to get to 44 or something to make this thing kind of a continuation pattern. Um <clears throat> So maybe we have the same thing going on again too, which I was talking about uh, that this, with the phase that we're in, you favor the, the small cap stuff. Your Russell, your NASDAQ's not really working out, but you know, the, the, because the dollar's stronger, you have issues with conglomerates yet, you know, the dollar's stronger, they have to raise prices to make everything match. You know, a dollar goes from 100 to 101, they have to raise prices, you know, it's actually, it's backwards, but I'll just rough it. It's 1%, you know, it's, it's more than that, but you don't understand what I'm saying, you know, uh, to make everything equal, you know, so here you have a thing where you're getting kind of a topping pattern in, in, um, in Coca-Cola. You also have Warren Buffett and occasionally I talk about, you know, old men at the end of their life blowing up, but, um, uh, you know, we're drinking bottled, bottled water is the number one selling thing that we're consuming in, in uh, bottled water and that soda pop. So, you know, you have a trend here. Do I drink, you know, Dasani or <laughs> the other one? Well, I prefer Arrowhead, you know, water, you know. Actually, I prefer uh, uh, the German Emperor Grolsteiner. <laughs> there you go, okay. My water comes in a one liter glass bottle. <laughs> that or, you know, any of the mineral waters that I find, you know, because they are out here, we have alkaline water. It's the, our river is clear, but it's alkaline. So it's 
chalky pasty. If you let it evaporate, it, you just find the powder. Uh, so they take it out of it, you know, like reverse osmosis. And so the trace minerals aren't there. So I find in my brain, I react to water. I'm uh, quite sensitive to stuff. Uh, you know, like a sip of beer and it kicks in. It's like I drink a, a case. You know. Those were the days, right? <laughs> Someone's like, yes, right? All right, so, you know, we're getting a topping pattern here. This isn't, I'm not saying that, you know, we're at the end of the line here, but in theory, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a recession. We're at the end of the line. We're at the end stages where we, we whip them up into IPOs, which is another thing we have coming. You know, we're trying to whip up the whole IPO, get, get them to come in here, just sell everything you have over the next two years, and then just pull the plug, you know, because that's what we're doing. We're raising rates to cool the economy, to run it in a recession, to get everybody to, to stop asking for a raise, you know, have them go back to working, you know, flying airplanes at $18,000. How dare you ask for 19, you know, that kind of deal. It's true. That plane that crashed in uh, uh, Buffalo, uh, they start them at their pay at 18000 a year. Uh, they, you can make more money in and out burger. But I won't get into that, will I? All right, Intel Corp. Uh, well, it's still trying to work on something. I'll give Intel the 42 here on it. It's at, here's the previous. Here, it's I'm not... The the, the 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 people in the know know more about it than I do, but this one just kind of like what do they call it? A mature stock. It's just a dividend yielder, um, you know. But it's it's had its hurrahs, you know. But I'll go along with it since it hurrahed with Microsoft. I'll go along with it too. Um, under thirty four, I'd pitch it then because it, it looks like it's going to go back to fourteen. You know, Intel would be whatever they can break it up, break it up. But I'll go, well, I'll go along with Intel to, to swing up into here for next year, right? <clears throat> um, that's all you have to do is punch it whole, you know, and all of a sudden they say, oh, chips are it, you know, kind of like NVIDIA, you know. Uh, Pfizer, same thing. This looks like a reversal bar here. So it looks like, you know, out of Washington is causing problems. Generally electric. I think mean, this thing's a zombie pretty much, right? I mean, they, they had to go as far as becoming GMAC in a banking type deal. But this is, you know, this is, uh, this is what, 97, 98, 99? I mean, it's, you know, it used to be the G, you know, good things, but, you know. Um, personally, I'd pass on this thing. But if you're a manager, you know, if you're moving billions of dollars and stuff, you know, it's, you just have to go along with the momentum deal here. The risk down here is 23, 24. You know, you could write, you could write puts down here, you know, if you get some sort of, you know, puts down here to go along on it. I mean, personally, I pass. I mean, you're looking at what, having it to go from 30 to 37 over a couple of years, I suppose it's 10% a year. Come on, Kev. You know, Cisco, you know, bad shape. I'd expect it to swing up here. Now, you know, if, if things start falling apart in the uh, on the drug side, something has to pick up the slack, and I could see General Electric pulling up the slack, and then, you know, Cisco pulling up the slack. You know, you just draw your trend line and just kind of, right, same type of game on here. You know, we get it to swing up on here. Um you know, what is this here? 47 from 30. So that's, that's a decent percentage. You know, you can, you can see it, right? Have it swing up into this area, get everybody all frothy, same type of game again, you know, and then um, this would be your support area. It's at about 26, 27. I see Russ is down again, but it did have a fat bar. Take a look at that real quick here. But calf, why are you buying when it's pointed down? Because I think oil is going to hold. Where's oil, calf? Oil, 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 oil. Uh, Fifty-two, not eighty-nine. Big fat bar here. Big fat bar here. And then you have this daily. This is S two. So it's it's one of those where it's just kind of like, okay, you know. 
Oh, it's, it's all oil. That's the only reason why I went after it. I just thought that oil um, uh, would stall out here. I don't know. But that's that. I think that's that, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that at that and then uh, move on. The P formation here where it moves up and trades sideways, that's usually indicative of short covering. We do have FOMC on Wednesday. And since I mentioned NVIDIA, NVIDIA, these are weekly bars. So the line makes the difference. And that's where we're at. We are stalling here. Oh, we're stalling at 92. So what's what did I write? Even if you cut this in half, you're back to the summer levels. <laughs> sideways. We're working on sideways. What is that, people? When we go sideways, a trend breaks out either one way or another. Be careful of 96, 97 of a jab. See how it Here's 95 and a quarter, here's 96. It jabbed up there. This is a two hour chart jabbed and came back down. So it's, it didn't make a lower low, so it held up. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give it a swing, but watch out for a jab here. Here's pivot on the two hour. So the, the deal is, is you get a gap and this could be the exhaustion gap. And the video of course has been going up uh, like a, a banshee, whatever, for a while. You know, here's 1999 uh, up to the cycle up to 2007, you know, $40 to five bucks and now we're way up here. So Kevin would be interested in clubbing this thing. That's how Kevin comes in here. Uh, it gets on your radar and all of a sudden people are like, hey, this is a great stock. And you're like, okay, let me see. The bodies are in here and we're faltering. So this would be one that I'd look to, um, like I said, you know, uh, uh, it coming apart here. Trend line, just draw a trend line underneath here. Um, but like everything else on the planet, if this gets part of the, the mo you know, because we're, we need people to buy stock, so you mark it up, right? And Tyson's, but what they can't afford, you know, they can't afford to play your Googles and your, and your Amazons, you know, they, what are they going to do by you know, four shares, five shares, six shares? So what they, it's natural. It's the greed thing. One of the 10 human fallacies, man, greed. They're going to go find the, 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 the crap out there and they're going to try and run it, you know, and to entice them. So, so what do we have here? We have a gap here and another gap here, but that's not as there's three types of gap. There's a breakaway gap, then a measuring gap, and then a uh, exhaustion gap. And I want to see what we have here. So our angle of ascent is increasing here. You know, here it's just nice, 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 nice. Now things are getting a little frothy and it's logged chart. So this is your trend line, trend line. Here's your volume. The bodies are coming in, you know, the body. You know, you get the, the volume push and the pause, the volume push and the pause, the volume push and then the pause. Same type of deal here, the video, dividend. Okay, yeah, oh, I know what to do real quick and then I'll let you guys go. Ah, uh, here we go, it's a one minute chart with volume. Okay, one day, we need to, to change this up some. All right. What did I say, 94? We need to change this around and go this way. We need more data points. I'm looking, what I'm looking for is overhead resistance with volume, and it's not giving me much on here. So what do we have? We have a jab. All right, computer says 119, but that's a hit or miss on here. So you have a jab, a pullback. All right, so the deal is here is if it, if it breaks on through the angle of ascent should increase um, sharply here. Your loss, well, 85, but what I would do there is, is I'd, uh, uh, I'd actually tighten this thing up on, uh, here we go, this will work for me. It's only a couple of days. Okay, 
All right, so 93.48 is a resistance area and we're kind of in a frothy thing. I think that was 94, 94 was it. All right, one more take a peek here. Two hour. Because what's, what's nice when things blow off, you can move the, you know, like uh, it takes off here, you know, you move your stop here, you know, then all of a sudden it breaks out again, you move your stop up to here. Uh, it poked on through. Okay, we got the decent pullback. You weren't, uh, you weren't, we're not stopped out. It poked on through. So you can move your stop back up into, uh, you know, most people go here. I'd move it up a little bit closer. And then, you know, if it breaks on through, then you'd move your stop up in here. But what, what happens is, is when the angle of ascent starts to increase, you don't get the pullback. And it's one way and then collapse. It falls on it, falls back on it. So. So, you know, if it busts through, even, you know, move your stop up, move your stop up, move your stop up. It's on a two-hour chart, but right now we have a pivot thing. So we possibly could have a shoulder ahead and another shoulder in NVIDIA. But you'd want to set your alarm, I guess it was 88. So resistance around like 94-ish we saw with the volume like here, lots of overhead supply. And then um, uh, you're looking for failures up in here if it, you know, makes if it breaks through here, then I'm going to assume it's going to come back down to the 70s. And that's a quick $20 with a lot of bodies in here, right? Lots of bodies. So there you have it. And everyone have a wonderful day. I'm on hitting the road. I only have to drive 57 miles. And um, I'll uh, send out some charts tonight. And then you have FOMC tomorrow. I'm looking for tree shaking. Uh, where's notes are at 124. I think I mentioned 127. I, it's, I'm not saying it's going to 127. What I'm saying that is like I'm a risk type guy, right? I mean, this, this, is, this is your risk. It could go to one. So it's one of these where if you're short, sell puts and buy a call and you, you can offset them and work your way out of them and things of that nature. Um, and uh, that was, that was uh, uh, notes and bonds. It's 148.30, we'll call it 149, you know, 155. You know, it's that kind of thing. Like I said, you, just, you know, it's like seven points. Well, look, you've gone from 77 to 70. You've lost 30 points. That's 30 grand on what, what uh, what's the margin on, on bonds these days? Five grand. And you made for 30, you know, 600% if you're caught the top, you know, and uh, didn't add on to every, you know, breakout, you know, you're talking, you know, 600% in, 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 since July, you know, a seven point, what is, well, just think about it. Fibonacci reach us, you moved 30, well, a one third pullback at a 30 point drop is nine points and nine off the bottom is uh, 156. You know, even a 10% of that is three points. And that's, that puts you into the 150, you know, 150 area, you know, so it's, you know, that's all I'm saying is it's not that it's going to happen. It's just that the market is, you know, everybody's looking over that book going, Hey, I'm going to make free money when the fed raises rates. Well, that's unfortunately on the front end, not on the back end. It does filter through. Like I talked about today, the, the, the two years and the five years and, you know, you know, if you want to go after it, you want to go after uh, fed fund futures, right? <laughs> you know, that's where it's at. That's where it's happening. So, but I'll let you go and everyone have a good day and I'll send out some more charts and before I take off and I'll send some stuff up tonight and then uh, tomorrow morning. Toodles.